welcome to another five hour review. We pick a game, play it for five hours, write down our deepest, darkest feelings, make it all into a little, little video for your entertainment. All with the goal of answering the question, will we keep playing? Say it with me now, is five hours an entirely arbitrary amount of time? Yes. Is five hours even long enough to decide whether a game is good or not? Well, it's, it's worked out pretty well so far. Are we gonna keep going anyway? Absolutely. <sighs> So I played both Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor on stream. And uh, once once I can figure out some proper ISO recording, then it will be easy as ban for shooting. So be prepared to see that a bit more often. All the links for all of those will be in the description so you can catch up if you want to. Of course, there are some early story spoilers for, for Survivor and Fallen Order, I guess. Um, so this will be your final warning. Consider yourself thoroughly warned. Come and get me. Anyway, let's start that timer. Jedi Survivor. <laughs> So we pick up the story of one Cal Kestis, five years after the events of Fallen Order. Now a fully fledged Jedi Knight after being given a battlefield promotion by an ex-Jedi Knight who cut herself off from the Force after messing with the dark side a little bit. I'm sure it'd be fine. The game begins with Cal in cuffs and Coruscant, creatively caught by this cunning cabal of comrades, completely capable of chucking Cal into the custody of a cut rake. Or in this case, the center of the Empire. See that he is paid. After a little back and forth, BD, which I'm sure stands for best droid, shows up and frees Cal to go after the Senator because he's got something useful on his hard drive or something like that. So we, we then meet Cal's mates, the Imperials from earlier. Uh, we've got Bone the Bounty Hunter, Gab the Hacker, Bravo the Marksman, and of course, the Twins. After convincing the Senator that he doesn't want to sell us Death Sticks. You can trust us. We're all friends here. Unlock it. We're all friends here. I can trust you. The mission is successful, but also there's a cost. And that cost is, well, everyone's lives except for Cal and Bone. So at least the bromance can continue. That's a win. Hell, gotta go. Hell, even the knife sister goes crazy and loses her head. Oh, he actually, oh, wow. It's... No, she's sleeping. She's just sleeping. Don't worry. <laughs> So after escaping Coruscant with bits of Bravo embedded in the Mantis, we rush off to find Grease, who has set himself up a nice little cantina. Isn't that nice? So we land on the planet Kobo and are immediately accosted by some battle droids who are hilarious, by the way. I wonder if I'll get promoted for doing such a good job. Then I'll get the other droids to guard the cliff. Oh, but then I won't see the scenery. Hmm, now that's a dilemma. And the Bedlam Raiders, which are complete <laughs> by the way. Eventually, you make it to town after meeting the stable owner, and Cal says exactly what's on everyone's mind who's ever played this on PC. Yeah, we had some uh, technical problems. Yeah. Me too, man. Me too. Anyway, we get into town to find Grease's Cantina, the Pylon Saloon, which I presume becomes your base of operations or just a nice like hub to come back to because it's really wants you to talk to everyone in there and also keep sending people back to it. Now the small hairy gentleman and Cal have a nice little heart to heart where Grease attempts to convince Cal to stop fighting the Empire and just give it all up, rest for a bit. This is after creeping up on him in bed though. Guess some things never change. Weirdo. He does eventually send us down to go get a new gyro for the Mantis. So off we pop. This eventually leads us to a new feature in the game, Jedi Temples, which are like platforming slash puzzle challenges involving magical electricity. And in this case, this ancient droid. Cal just can't stop touching things and echoes into the memories of the droid. And we see her master, Santari Kree. I'm sorry it has come to this. We save Z and head back to the pylon, where Bone is waiting for us and Grease proves why he is the best mate you could ever have. Look, I told you, buddy, you're in the wrong cantina. I don't know anybody named Cal Kestis. Hey, Grease. Oh, that Cal Kestis. Found the gyro. This leads us to head off on the droid's actual mission, which was to raise the forest array in Kobo to acquire the key to Tantalor. So far, so Star Wars. Skipping forward a bit, and after much Jediing, we end up, we come across this, uh, this rehabilitation center with uh, a man in a vat of water. It's only that bloke what we saw in them, uh, them visions just a minute ago. You're not here. So this ancient one-armed boxer built a temple and founded Tantalor, 
until it was attacked and then subsequently abandoned by the Jedi Order. He is pissed. I reckon he's probably going to be the main bad guy then. I will not be imprisoned again. But once we navigated some interesting technical issues on the stream, we were away. The introduction of new NPCs and a newer, more confident Cal definitely makes the world feel five years older. I mean, it's, it's clear that in the intervening time, Cal is coming to his own, making some new friends, leading, to their, leading them to their deaths. Sure, sure, that won't be a plot point later. So as I said, I really enjoy playing through Fallen Order on stream and the Metroidvania Souls-like sort of idea they had going with it with the strong story element tying it all together. It's, so, it's something that I was definitely looking forward to with Survivor and it doesn't disappoint in this area. This is definitely not the kind of jumping off kind of sequel where it like goes into its whole own thing. It's very much a more of the same, just more of the same. This is a clear escalation from Fallen Order and I'm here for it. The new confidence of Cal and even his facial expressions, for example, the anger on his face after Gav gets shot, is just pure cinema. I love it. Even down to the transitions in cutscenes, where the screen actually squeezes into cinema scope to give you the sense that you are actually watching something that could be on the big screen. Yeah. Look at that. My god, though, this game is visually stunning. Respawn are known for it and they don't disappoint in this area either. Also, you better unlock ponchos later on in the game because it, I haven't got one yet and I'm upset. Quick quick, have you played Fallen Order? If not, go do that. If you like that, you'll like this. On account of it being almost exactly the same, but more, you know, much more. You've got your regular force powers, you're pushing, you're pulling, you're slowing time, which now exists as an almost special move, which can be used in special circumstances or in my case, pretty much not at all. But now there's also the delightfully titled Force Confuse, because, you know, Jedi mind control is a bit too on the nose. <laughs> this is where you tell an enemy that these are not the droids they're looking for and they should move along. And then they go off and fight their old mates. This, like the other Force powers, can be updated in the skill tree. Which reminds me, the skill tree is far bigger this time around, with room for five different lightsaber stances, a bunch of Force powers and the obligatory survival tree for more health and all that good stuff. The combat is smooth and fun. Personally, I love the double saber, uh, so I can live out my dreams of fighting like Darth Maul without the whole being cut in half thing. This lends itself to a more aggressive playstyle, which I found fairly successful. The game continues where Fallen Order left off with its Souls-like combat, and I presume a fair amount of backtracking to satisfy the Metroidvania heads out there. The comparisons to Dark Souls don't stop there. This time they've included fast travel from the off for the second installment. So you can walk between meditation points, which is cool, but I never end up using it in my playthrough. I'm sure as the game progresses, it'll, it'll become more useful as opposed to just the quality of life edition. I'd also like to know the in-universe explanation for it, because if Jedi can walk between meditation points, how comes they can't just walk straight into the, Je the old Jedi Council and, you know, fight from the inside? I don't know, food for thought. I am definitely going to keep playing this game. Should EA bless me with being able to play the game that I paid good money for. This does lead me on to chat about the DRM elephant in the room. The game is spectacular, but it is seriously undermined by the issues that a lot of PC players are experiencing. I'm running a very high end PC and I'm, I'll put my specs in the uh, in the description just so you can see. But I I was but I was getting frame drops and weird visual glitches that I couldn't explain. And then of course there's a big one for me. So whilst attempting to record the footage that you've seen in this video so far, I was having issues with OBS in an attempt to fix this. I had to make certain changes to my system, which necessitated restarts to the machine. This caused EA's anti-cheat to assume or to think that I opened up the game on multiple PCs, which I haven't. And this caused the too many computers of access this, this account's copy of Jedi Survivor error message, which you'll see on screen right now. After doing some digging on forums, etc., it seems though EA can't really do anything about this at the moment, because it's an automated system which is acting as it should, it's I'd like to know how it decides what a new PC is, which is a shame as it locked me out of the game for a decent period of time without any indication of how long that period was. Hopefully EA manages to release a fix soon. We are still in the game's first week of release after all. So with all that out of the way, I'd like to give Star Wars Jedi Survivor a... I find your lack of faith disturbing. Out of 10. Atari Kree. Thank you all for watching. That feels like a long one. <laughs> I won't be surprised if that's well over the five minutes. If you enjoyed the video, please, please, please give it a like. Comment down below what you think of the game. If you've bought it, are you enjoying it, etc, etc. Share with your friends. 
it really helps channel out and we appreciate every interaction we get also subscribe if you're new to the channel we've got lots of content for you guys to get your teeth stuck into and we are attempting to make more uh, feel free to follow us on twitter and at on twitch uh the links will be in the description that's where all things live and twitting will be in the future so feel free to give us a follow anyway just over one of these directions you'll see some videos from youtube that they think you'll like so feel free to click on those thanks again for watching see you soon love you bye oh yeah may the fourth be with you